Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. Uh, last couple episodes I've been talking a lot about uh, the new Unity and how it's going to be changing a lot of things. I never really explained what the what Unity is. Uh, Unity is the code under the hood. It is what gets the game doing what the game does. Drawing the box, doing the hitboxes, textures, lights, shadows, movement, everything. And, and currently uh, Planet Nomads is using a 2015 version I believe and they're up, currently working on upgrading it to a 2018 uh, as with most things a newer version usually means a better version uh, there's a lot of optimizations that are done with the new version of the code just like on the code level just for better code handling calculations and and whatnot uh, a few, a lot of the veterans out there probably know of some of the the issues we've had with the the physics, and I'm gonna attempt to show you this here because I've done this. This is the third time we attempted to do this, but my co-star doesn't want to cooperate with me. Uh, usually, what happens is when you have multiple function uh, active blocks like suspensions and hinges and rotating plates. At least back in uh, about a year ago anyways uh, they didn't really cooperate too well you've probably seen the train act up a couple of times you've probably seen that little little car I have there sort of tweak out on the the ramp and whatnot and that's just basically the game code is trying to figure out what to do it can't do the calculations properly and then it sort of gets out of control and I'm hoping we're gonna have this instant now now the way the game works is any blocks that are outside of 100 meters of you don't animate. I think that just moved. This place is haunted, I tell you. But yeah, anything outside of 100 meters, it's drawn, but it's technically unloaded. It's not being affected by physics or movement or anything like that. But when you come into range, this will probably crash my game. It has before. There you go. She wasn't too bad today. There she goes. And that's going to crash my game. But in the new Unity, um, as I said, I think I mentioned it before, this isn't final, so you can see like there's not proper water reflections, and uh, things may seem a little choppy, they may not. I am playing at the same graphic settings, just in case you're wondering. But I'll head over here, and I don't think she's going to budge a, an inch. I actually got this because she broke my game I could not load the save file at all look at that didn't even move so that's good so that's like the number of times I've had things go wrong I've created lagzilla lagzilla 2 king lagzilla and yeah this is really good and a lot of people probably have suffered incidences like that and then there's another another issue we had was large structures ghosting. Uh, they, they're there, but they're not. Now, I don't know if it's got to do with actual size, because I know my base is pretty big, or block count. I know this one is through the roof, but you can see it, but you go right through it. You can't touch it, you can't interact with it. It's there, you can see it, you can't interact with anything. It's, it's a ghost, it's a phantom. And this was so disappointing to me because this happened to me like three times on this build. Uh, originally I built it with the small air blades and the lag from those things was just killer. I unplanted it, I got about a frame a second and then I couldn't load it anymore. But then we'll bring this back up into the new Unity. I can walk on it, I can jump on it, I can change color if I wanted, and I can even fly it. It's going to be a, a little laggy, uh, only when I'm going up and down. I realize I could get more air blades on this thing, get it going a little bit faster, but it does move. The only thing is, though, is when I go up, that's when you start to see a little bit of a, a jitter in the frame. I don't know if it's because it's accelerating, going up faster than I am going forward, but it does work, and it, it shows big promise for huge builds. And I know there's a lot of people out there that like building big things and going crazy and have had issues where they go and build a big giant base and they have a problem with it. But yeah, that's uh, good news for me, definitely. And I 
gives me an opportunity to do more big stuff like this and push the limits. Maybe I'll get a 200 foot tall mech warrior walking around eventually. Let's get there. Yeah, as I said, this is final, but even then, it's still pretty good. But anyway, for today's build, I had a bit of an idea for sort of a remote control, wireless remote control system. Uh, it could be used for anything, really. Uh, I have technically used it up there, but that was just to pull a carriage back and forth, and that was just controlling a hover pad on either side to pull it back and forth. So I want to see if I can actually make something that could be controlled and steered from two switch ports. So we just stand here, we control it, and watch it run around. Again, keeping within the 100 meter range, because we do have issues with that. Uh, well, yeah, uh, I'm going to use the base foundations for this one just because it's be a lot quicker. I rarely use these things. My hover mode doesn't work for some reason. I don't know why, but anyways. Uh, one, thing I'd, one thing I'm going to be using is the uh, reconnection feature of the switchboards. Let's actually get a nice color for this. Let's get some tarmac going here. I've been always talk about paving my, my compound. I never do. So I'm going to lay out an area here. Um, what I want to do is I want to get an area big enough where I can have four switchboard hu switchboard hubs, let's say. And uh, because the switchboards reconnect or disconnect at 40 and reconnect at 40 blocks, I'm going to try to keep it within 30 or keep the keep them spaced about I guess about 50 blocks apart. So I might be able to go like right over to that plant there or something like that. Uh, but I'll get something set up and I'll bring it back. Alright, so I've got a pad here set up. It's actually 10, 10 by 10 base foundations, which is 80 blocks. I don't know what the what the actual size of these blocks are. I know it's not meters, I think it might be feet. But at the same time too, the switchboards only uh, work up to 40 blocks. So what I want to do now is I want to get... Yeah, we'll set up three switchboards here. Now I'm thinking about it. Might have to piggyback it. Yes. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, I'm, uh, since I got this 10 by 10, I'm going to go three blocks in, uh, three tiles in both sides, or three base foundations, whatever. They're really, really, really big tiles and really heavy. And put some switchboards down. So that's one. That's going to be two. And this is going to be three. So basically, I'm going to be having going to call my control hubs here. So I'll have one over there. We'll go over to this side here, and we'll count three foundations. One, two, three. That's right. Two, yeah. I actually count the, the these things here. All right, so that's that side. And then, uh, and then I'll get the other ones done. I'll finish up, and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I have them set up, and this is where the color coding actually comes in handy, because uh, I need to have one for right, one for left. So I'll have do one green. Let's go ahead and connect it. Uh, these all have to be completely different circuits. Uh, the reason why I have three of them is two of them are going to be for a hover pad. It's going to be controlled sort of like tank tracks, where you you turn one on to turn one way, turn the other one on to turn the other way, or turn both on to go forwards. That's how we're going to do it. So we're going to go ahead and connect this one up to the other other green ones. If it reaches, it does. Perfect. Realistically, I could go much bigger with this, but at least this this way it makes sure that it connects no matter where it is. And of course, when I build this, I'm going to have to build it right in the center so I can connect it to all the switchboards in one shot. So uh, same thing with this one. We go green to green, and then I'm going to probably do a blue and then a white and then uh, I'll bring you back when I'm all done okay there's our mask control grid I'm gonna call it technically it's a wireless grid but you know, what we need to do is just get three more switchboards over here I haven't really thought about the kind of a platform that I have I'm just gonna go just standard uh, let's get something colorful here uh, go with some blue Hmm. It's a light box. I want to do something interesting with these things one one day. Just uh, uh, the little light beam. Let's put this in the middle. We don't want to be too far away from it either. 
Uh, middle will be right here, I think. And of course, we want to be up a little bit so we can actually see what we're doing. And watch those base foundations when you put them. Put them down, they can, they can hurt you. I know there's some experience. Oh, these batteries go by so quick. Which reminds me, I'll have to go cut down another forest soon. I see some pink trees I should get rid of. Alright, this will help for our, our control pad. Perfect. So then, uh, get a few more switch boards down. We will need... Uh, let's see, I'd like to have them in a good spot, so... Let's go... One, two... That'll work. I know I don't have four of them, but whatever. That's what happens when you build odds and evens at the same time. Alright, so we need one blue switch, we need one green switch, and we need one white switch. And then, because I don't want the... I don't know, for one, I don't know if it's going to actually reach all the way over there. Two, I don't want to... If I have a belt division, I don't want these bright lights going right in front of my view, so... We'll put three more down here. One, two, three. And again, we'll have white. And then um, blue and green. And I think I have that in the right order. So we'll connect green up to... Oh, hang on. Gotta change the color here. So much easier than taking the switchboards apart. <laughs> All right, so green to green and see if it'll connect over here just all right and basically these switches are going to be sending power to those switches which are going to be sending power to our little controller vehicle thingy the thing that goes around when you push the buttons so we do the same thing with the blue and the blue which is that come on that one and then we do the same with the white Oh, we go like that. White to white to white. Alright, so all I gotta do is we've got a power source to this. That's gonna be enough to control two hover pads and a light. And we are good to go. So now to build this thing. Now, because I have the switchboards here, I should technically have suspensions on this, but I'd rather not have suspensions. I am gonna be using rotating plates, but I might. Uh, I was originally gonna try to build it the same way I have that set up up there um, you know I have it on the 45 but because of the fact that I want sort of articulation like uh, mining dump trucks when you steer it actually hinges in the middle in between the front wheels and the back wheels and the reason why I want to do that is because I might not be able to steer it just having one hover pad on put pulling on one side because it's a rigid frame but if I do that at least it'll get some turning going into it so what I plan on doing is basically putting the hover pads on a hinge and dropping them down. And I think that's going to be the best way I can do this. And, uh, sure, let's go with a post. It might be a little long, but whatever. So we'll drop that there, and then we'll work on it. So I'm going to throw something together here. And, uh, I might have to figure a few things out, and I'll be back when I got something. Okay, this is... This is what I have. It's not pretty, I'll admit that, but hey, as long as it works, that's all I care about. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to throw a generator under here and go from there. We'll need a switchboard on here because we won't be able to connect that generator to all three switchboards. Uh, it doesn't matter what color that is, and it doesn't matter what color the generator is either. Uh, I did actually go and check the container to get some deuterium. I have 111 stacks. I should be good for a while. It's one thing I never have an issue with is resources. Alright, so what I want to do is actually we'll connect this first. Connect that to there. And then connect it to these three. So right now, everything has power. Well, it will once I put some fuel in here. So we go back up here, and then we'll just turn them all off. So that way there's no, no power going down here. And then we're going to drop this down and uh, wire it up. And drop it does. 
So what I plan on doing this time is, um, as I was saying, that this is going to be our steering point. We're going to be using the hover pads to actually turn the vehicle. It's going to articulate the front and basically use this as a pivot point. That's if things work out. I might actually have to put a little bit more weight on the back here, just in case it decides to go a little, uh, go a little. Uh, we'll call it ass end up. Uh, just do this quickly here, and yeah. Uh, I also plan on, the reason why it's on a hinge right now is because I had to drop it down and what I'm going to do, I'm thinking about doing is using long slopes because I want it as close to the ground as possible but I also want to be able to make sure it goes over the switchboards. So that's something we'll figure out right now. And let's actually see where it lands with a post. Let's actually use a ceiling tile instead if I have one. Let's put that here. Yes, that works better. And it's just a place for it to drop down on. We go in here and we unlock it. And let's see where it stops. So it could go down a little more. Uh, probably could have used a rotating plate. I know these things are a little tight. Sometimes you got to manhandle them. I think I might have to place that with a rotating plate unless that's actually stopping it which I doubt and if it doesn't work jump on it yeah I'll get right on that Susan all right I don't think that's gonna be enough we'll actually give it a test um, I'm gonna do a quick save here just in case things go wrong I'll bring you back we'll wire it up and see if this is enough. I think I need to be down a little bit more. Okay, so now uh, what I have to do is I have to connect each switchboard here to all four of its respective uh, respective uh, corresponding switchboards. Yes, yes. So we take the green, we go to the green ones over here, we go to that one, that one, that one, and this one. And this way, it makes sure that even if it's all the way in the corner, it'll still be connected to this switchboard. If I drive it over here, it'll disconnect from this one, reconnect to this one. They should reach in the middle and go from there. Is that all four of them? Yes. So we'll do the blue. And of course, I do have to actually hook these up to the hover pads or they're kind of useless. Now, where's the blue? There's the blue. That's another good thing about the color coding, too, is when you actually have the switchboards color coded. You can tell if you're actually getting to the right switchboard by the color of the power line. So let's have the blue on the right, on the right side, which we'll make us turn left. And I'll do this. I'll do with the green. The green's gotta connect to the other one. All right, and then hook up the light. Goes there. There. What I find is if you're having trouble get finding a particular one here because it's so cl cluttered, if you start at the top, the closest side, as soon as it registers, like there, and it'll get, to, get you to the one you want. And one more. Okay. Take build vision off. And one last thing I gotta do is, well, a few things I gotta do. One is unlock the wheels. But we gotta put these on hover mode. And then just unlock the wheels quickly. Lock those. The hinge stays locked. Not that it matters, it's not gonna go anywhere. Sometimes you need to put like a beacon on those things to weigh them down. Alright, that's unlocked. Oh, that's not unlocked. No, that's the wheel. Okay, that is unlocked. And I think that's it. I think I can actually push it too. All right, let's see what happens. We are fueled up, wired up, and ready to go. And yeah, either. Okay, interesting. Needs more weight in the front, definitely. Because it was actually starting to lift it up. Uh, that is unlocked. Okay. All right. Let's get some more weight on here then.
Maybe it'll weigh it down too. Did I lock that? I think I did. Yes, I did. Actually, I know a good way to get this down. Uh, what should we use here? Let's let's go with that long slope. I was gonna use. Uh, put that here, and see if I can get this right where the hover pad is gonna land. There, yes. All right, now throw a beacon on it. <laughs> this doesn't do it. Nothing will. I might have to land a helicarrier on it just to get this to land. Uh, go down. Come on. Where are you? There you are. Oh. Get that off. Is that all that's going to go down? Oh, you can see the articulation. Alright, well, let's just lock this and try it again. I might have to switch that over to a rotating plate. Just so we can get these down a little bit more. Alright, let's give it another test run. Now we gotta straighten it out. Uh, look at that, it's jackknifed. Oh, there we go. It's working. Slowly, but it's working. But it is a prototype. All right, straighten her out. Turn the light on, and just for kicks. Kind of pulls to one side. My sensors show you are slightly thirsty. I like it though; it works. I'm actually surprised. Mind you, that could have worked a little bit better. Let's turn that auto save off. No. I'll turn that light off just for the hell of it. And then we get straighten her out. I'm sure the uni new Unity will help with uh, other things like that. I know I talk about it all the time, but you know, with the kind of things that I, li I like to do, it comes in handy to be able to know that things work the way they work, well, the, way, the way they should. Uh, I'm actually thinking about this now. Realistically, I should have had these switchboards underneath the ceiling, pa the foundation just so the vehicle is not driving over. And I think what's happening, why it's turning, is because when this goes over the switchboard, it gets more push than the other side. So it causes it to turn. But uh, yeah, this is actually pretty interesting. So you get a whole lot of switchboard set up. You can have all sorts of different controls and mechanics and stuff like that on it. And be able to do all sorts of interesting things. And this is sort of like how my control scheme was supposed to be for for the mech because I know right now we don't have key bindings we don't have cockpit control other than just your standard forward and backward up and down left and right which I have used in many, many occasions like the spider for instance I was actually to get it to walk I had to go forward and back just to way I had had it worked out so I pushed forward uh, half the legs went forward while the other half went backwards and then I pushed back and the ones that went forward are going back, and the ones that went back are going forward. So I was sort of alternating. I had to. I was having difficulty moving it, moving it too, because these hover pads they have power, but not as much as I'd like. So I had to sort of get to, sort of shimmy to walk. But there we go. And see, any stuff like this too, you could, uh, could have. You maybe even have these over here somewhere if you could find a way to get them mounted on a 45. And then you could have yourself like a little little bulldozer bucket on the front or a little skyhook crane that's just being lifted up with a hover pad that's on a beam with a ceiling towel like I've done with some of those things over there. But there we go. That's uh, anyway, an interesting concept and something that could be used in many occasions. The only problem is those we can't use it more than 100 meters away. As soon as it gets within 100 meters away from us, then... And that's it, and it stops until we get closer and it starts moving again. You've probably seen it with, uh, when I fired the, when I launched the trebuchet for the first time, when I fired the ball, it just stopped in midair, 100 meters away, and I flew up to it, and it would start to move again. I got closer and would start moving again, and, you know, maybe that's something that they can, 
extend improve the range on i i do understand why they're doing it they're trying to keep the system run at a high enough frame rate as possible because it is a bit of a demanding game it really helps to have a solid state drive on it but you know if you have stuff that's animating 500 meters away if i got some if i'm got that going on that going on let's say i got the roller coaster actually working and doing its thing it's trying to render that and it's just like just like minecraft you have too many chunks loaded and then you bog down the system but anyways that's going to be it for this one i hope you guys enjoyed um also keep uh keep an eye out for a new ser uh, new series you should be seeing in the next week or so uh i've been talking about building a city well i've got made some plans on that one and we'll get into that when the season starts um i'll also keep you all up to date with what's going on with the new unity i'm definitely going to be asking the devs about this uh, the version i have is actually an older version because you know it's they're trying to rewrite the entire code basically but yeah uh anyways uh, thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed it if you did leave me a like and i'll see you in the next one later